James Kaufman, World News Report today, September 17, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, NOAA and NASA tell us we've been in a G4 severe geomagnetic storm. Now they use the estimated planetary KP index, as you may know, and they believe from 0 hundred to 600 UTC time, we've been in a severe geomagnetic storm, and that's been followed by nine additional hours here of a strong geomagnetic storm. Looking at other KP indexes, the Boulder Index also indicates that we were in a severe storm for three hours, and that has been dwindling. We do have three hours here of a geomagnetic disturbance, and we're back to storm conditions. Looking at our Fredericksburg Index, well, it does not indicate that the solar storm got as strong as some of the other indexes indicate. But the Fredericksburg Index does show that we've been in a geomagnetic storm for the last 15 hours. Moving down to the College Index, it did not start off as strong as some of the others, but it did make its way into a severe geomagnetic storm, and it also shows 15 hours of geomagnetic storm for today. And that's going to be September 17th, 2024, and this is an ongoing developing situation. Now, we have things about this geomagnetic storm that I have never seen before. And you guys know that I've been looking at this for way too many years. This actually turned into a proton storm. And that usually happens directly after a solar flare. Now, we've seen this with Earth-facing solar flares and even solar flares on the back side where the whole solar system is filled with protons. But again, this has always happened after the solar flare, directly after not when the coronal mass ejection impacts Earth, which is where we supposedly are today. Now, the data is not going to show that once we get to Discover Satellite and A Satellite, which even makes this stranger. We've had no significant solar flares, as I will show you all, that would cause this proton storm. And we're also in a polar cap absorption event. Both of those usually happen directly after an Earth-facing solar storm with a strong coronal mass ejection, but protons leading that. And usually by, well, 30 or 40 hours minimally, at which time the coronal mass ejection impacts. So we usually see these proton storms and polar cap absorption events directly after the coronal mass ejection leaves the sun and, well, not during the impact of Earth. And here is the data, folks. You can see we've had no substantial M flares for the last three days, so I have no idea how what is occurring is occurring unless we just have no atmosphere to protect Earth left whatsoever. And here is NOAA's warning, G4 severe geomagnetic storming observed. A major disturbance in Earth's magnetic field, often varying in intensity between lower levels and severe storm conditions over the course of the entire event. What you should do, the general public should get properly informed of storm progression by visiting Space Weather Prediction Center page. That's what we're doing. Those under or near the 30-minute prediction aurora extent can look for an aurora if at night and should the weather conditions permit. Possible technological effects. Infrastructure operators have been notified to mitigate any possible impacts, possible increase in more frequent voltage control problems, normally mitigatable, increased possibility of abnormalities or effects to satellite operations. 
more frequent and longer periods of GPS degradation possible. Now, we're in a polar cap absorption event as well, so that is going to be tenfold. So, again, this was released at 2.57 UTC time today on the 17th. This was not forecast for the 17th. We'll jump over to the new Space Weather Prediction Center that was just upgraded, and you can see that this was forecast, but it was forecast for the 16th yesterday and they were looking for about 50 centimeters cubed of plasma and about 800 kilometers per second in solar winds well we saw none of that yes that would have been a g4 severe geomagnetic storm but let's see what really happened all right first off over to the d region absorption prediction center as I indicated, we're in a proton storm and also in a polar absorption event here. And this is 1130 UTC time. I believe this continues. We'll see if it uh, starts to back off here. But there's really no way to understand this. This again usually occurs right after an earth facing or a strong flare since protons and x-rays at Earth. This never really accompanies a coronal mass ejection, at least in my experience. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this occur. Now we're also going to see that solar winds did not go up to 800 kilometers per second, and we didn't see really any plasma anywhere near 50 centimeters cubed. Let's take a look at Discover Satellite and A Satellite and try to figure this out. All right, jumping over to real time solar winds, our Discover satellite. First, we noticed that the shields really never went up here. Our 5GSM is really, well, angled down. And then we look at the plasma during this time period. This is when the impact hit here. And we see plasma, uh, well, go up, but. Some of the highest readings were just above 10 here. Nowhere near 50. I'm going to try to get one of these readings if I can. They're making it next to impossible. But you can see that we had some readings at about 20. Uh, 1, 21 centimeters cubed. Which has never caused anything but maybe a G1. Maybe a G1 geomagnetic storm. I will in fact say that. The shields have never stayed down like this for a storm, and that might be the problem here. There is no plasma like they predicted. I don't see any. We can jump over here again, and the highest is a 14. Now, we have two minutes of data, one right there and one right there. I don't know if those are anomalous or if that's real data, but nothing comes anywhere close to 13.57 being in even a G1 geomagnetic storm. And we can say the same for the temperatures. They were here at 437. They jumped up to 577. They cleared 600 for one or two minutes here around this period. Uh, and we had some higher readings. The highest reading we ever saw was a 650, not 800 kilometers per second. None of this justifies anything near a G4 severe geomagnetic storm. We see that the plasma and temperature are moving together, which I don't like. Uh, well, I do like, but the solar winds are also moving with the plasma. Very strange indeed. And currently we're still supposedly in this huge solar storm, but we see plasma at 5.71 here, and we see solar winds at 500 kilometers per second, which would be just a normal day out at the park. Temperatures are also completely normal. There's really no way to explain what the KP indexes are showing us. Now, the Aurora Borealis and Aurora Austral Australis will be a telltale tonight. The telltale of the intensity of the solar storm should be 
how far south the aurora borealis can be seen with both the naked eye and the camera and how far north the aurora australis can be seen with both the naked eye and a camera this is a freak show to say the very least we're going to make sure and check this on ace before we go a second look a second opinion jumping over to ace real-time space weather our other satellite brings us lots of information you can see the impact time period right here right before zero hundred maybe around 2300 UTC time here and well we see temperatures really jump up here we see solar winds going from about 450 to about 550 there's only a couple of dots above even 600 nowhere near the 800 kilometers estimated and we can look at the density and we see some registrations just above the 20 centimeters cube mark with one outliner one minute of data that would be up probably around 50 centimeters cubed one minute of data the shields never reacted and remained down there's really no indication of a solar storm especially a kp7 plus solar storm i.e severe solar storm almost going to a kp8 definitely a g4 unbelievable if anyone can explain any of this to me please let me know in the comments below because for me this is a first time to see any event like this i've got a real problem with the proton storm hitting with the coronal mass ejection i've got a real problem with a polar cap absorption event hitting with a coronal mass ejection plasma does not cause that x-rays and protons cause those god bless you and yours folks please share subscribe and always remember i guess anything's possible in bizarro world